Hi, my name is Emily Guest from the Department of Integrative Biology, and I'm here today with Dr. Andrea Schufrin of Entomology and Plant Pathology, and we're going to talk to you about maggot art. The cool concept with maggot art is that you use living insects and actually have them draw the artwork on a sheet of paper. That gives you time while the kids are playing to talk about decomposition and some morphology, and you come out with a beautiful starburst pattern painting that they can then take home and teach their parents about. Not a lot of supplies are required. Of course, you need a tray to keep the maggots from crawling around too far, and anything will work. A tray from the uh, cafeteria at school, this one's paper, but the plastic ones would work fine. A shoe box works really well, both the top and the bottom. And then any plastic square pieces that will keep the maggots from crawling around, those will work fine too. If you purchase maggots, you can do so from a bait shop online or from a scientific supply house like Carolina or Ward Scientific. Um, you only need a thousand, which is usually the number they sell them at. And if they arrive before you plan to do the activity, the maggots will keep in the lower drawer of your refrigerator until you're ready to use them. You just need to let them out to thaw 30 minutes before you start the activity. Other things include bowls to keep the maggots in during the activity, paper for the maggots to move around on, and then paint colors. Uh, tempera paint works just fine. It's washable. The consistency of tempera right from the jar is going to need a little bit of watering down because it, the surface is too tense and the maggots can't move around. So you just need to add a little bit of water, maybe one or two tablespoons, to a container about that size. And you'll need some kind of dispenser. I guess they could probably even use a syringe to inject dots of paper if you inject dots of paint if you don't have something like this. Now there are our maggots. Here's our paint. Most importantly, be sure that the first thing the kids do is put their name on the sheet of paper that they're going to do their maggot art on or they'll be very sad when they can't figure out which is theirs after it dries. All right, so you have everything. Go ahead and put dime-sized dots of paint on a piece of paper. If you use big splots of paint, they'll never dry. It's a big mess. Um, you can use any colors, your school colors, the university colors, anything that you like. Um, they just need to put small amounts of paint onto the paper. Then, for each dot of paint, the students can pick out one or two maggots one by one and put them in the paint, and the maggots will paint the picture for the students. As they move along, they'll drag the paint along with them and you get these random, everyone is different starburst patterns. One hazard here is to be sure that kids don't scoop up the handful of maggots and just dump it onto the sheet of paper because that will make an enormous mess and it won't make a pretty picture at all. So as the maggots crawl to the edge, just pick them up and put them back on the sheet of paper in another paint spot they are not going to suffocate. Insects don't have lungs, and these particular animals are used to a very wet environment, and so they have no eyes. They breathe through their abdomen, so they won't suffocate, and their mouth is a straw, so they're able to shut that off. So all you need to do is 
Let it go until you have the perfect picture. Let it dry. And then the kids can take it home and talk about the importance of these animals. These maggots destroy dead bodies down to nothing but bones and hair in just a few days. And so they're important in our world because they're the janitors of our planet, keeping everything clean. And it's fun to look up close at their bodies while they're moving. They have such a unique way of motion and there's really nothing to them except for the mouth, which we call a beak, and then the two breathing holes on the flat end of the abdomen. Now, when you're all done with the activity, just pick the maggots up one by one, put them back into the bowl. Don't worry about trying to get the paint off. Anything like that is perfectly fine. They'll do it all by themselves. So you may notice in, the, in with the maggots that there are these unmoving brown kind of mahogany things. Those are the pupa, the cocoon, where the larva is turning into an adult. We hope you enjoyed this crazy activity with live bugs. If you have questions or would like more information, you can contact OSU Insect Adventure on the website or on the YouTube channel. Until next time, Go Pokes!